Welcome! This video will walk through the basic setup of a Fusion or Compact Fusion SCR power controller. We will do so in four parts. First, mounting, wiring, and basic controller operation. A second video will cover full-scale settings. First, you will need to mount the controller. Be sure to do so at least three inches away from other devices in order to ensure proper ventilation. Next, ground the controller as shown. Then we need to connect line power, load connections, and control power. For single phase and three phase two leg controllers, you will also need to connect a reference voltage to the line ref input shown here. On the side of the controller, locate the P1 connector. Note that pin 7 and pin 9 are the run and reset, used to enable, disable, or reset the controller. These pins are commonly wired with a run stop switch. Note that while opening the run stop on pin 7 and pin 9 inhibits firing of the SCRs within one half cycle, the only safe way to service the controller is by having the mains disconnected by mechanical means. SCRs are solid state devices and cannot be considered a mechanically safe disconnect. You will see voltage on the load side of SCRs even when not firing. We will wire pin 7 and pin 9 closed to enable controller operation in the following examples. Next, we'll cover analog set points. You can use the built-in display on your controller to monitor and change your controller settings. Scroll through the settings using the arrow keys to set point type. The display tells us that we are currently using analog control. This is the default setting and means that pin 7 and pin 8 on P1 are open. Use the arrow keys to view set point selection. We are using set point 1. On P1, this means that pin 7 and pin 10 are open. Then we can scroll down further on the display and see that set point 1 is currently reading a 16.78 milliamp analog command signal, shown here connected to pins 2 and 3. To switch to analog set point 2, simply close pin 7 and pin 10 and move your analog command signal to pins 4 and 5. Now let's go back and wire the controller for digital set point 1. To do so, close pin 7 and pin 8 in order to select digital set point and make sure pin 10 is left open to select set point 1. Then scroll to digital set point 1 on the display to see the digital set point command. We will edit the setting later when we cover controller operation. Let's take a closer look at our indicator LEDs. The top LED will turn green after you've connected universal input power. This is what powers the controller's electronics. The second LED will turn green when the main's input power is present. And the status LED has three settings. Green for a run state, orange for a warning alarm, and red for an inhibit alarm. If the status LED is off completely, no alarms are present, but the controller is not enabled. We've wired the controller for analog control, and we'll use an analog source to change our settings. In our case, we've connected to the controller with a PLC. We can also scroll down using the arrow keys and view the output of both set points, then use our PLC to increase or decrease output between 4 and 20 milliamps. Let's go back and try this using a digital set point. To do so, pin 7 and pin 8 must be closed. Then we scroll on the display to digital set point. The dot next to the name indicates that we can edit this setting, so we press the green button and use the plus or minus keys to change the output from 0 to 
Once we've reached the right value, we press the green button again and save the change. For more information, visit our website at www.cciPower.com or contact the experts at Control Concepts Incorporated.